Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, now I'm in a rather peculiar um, corner of France today, the southwest. It's the sort of thing that on a uh, medieval map there's probably a sign down there that say Irby Dragons. Uh, well, also, apart from dragons, this uh, also place Irby Interesting Wines. And uh, I've got four different appellations in front of me, two whites, two reds, uh, and uh, some of them with great varieties that, um, actually most of them with uh, great varieties that are off the beaten track. Let's dig in. First one I've got is uh, La Vigne de Lubli, Domaine de Descals. Uh, a forgotten vine, I think, La Vigne de Lubli. Uh, Domaine Descals, uh, uh, Blanc Sec, Dry White, from Gaillac. Uh, and I think uh, Gaillac, for the appellation of Gaillac, you're allowed a bit of Sauvignon. And uh, are you allowed Sauvignon? Uh, Sauvignon Muscadel, and this one called Mosac. Um, Mosac may be best known in France for uh, making sparkling wines in Limoux. I think you're now allowed uh, another one called uh, Londelel. Are you allowed Londelel and Ondonc or something like that? Anyway, uh, I think they said fermenté en barrique, uh, et élevé en fou de la galacoise. Uh, so I don't, a guy acquires, so I had no idea what to, a, uh, um, oh, well, better just dig in and uh, see, yeah, uh, it, it just says en fou, I don't know what is special about the uh, the barrels from this part of the world, but uh, let's give it a sniff and see if I can find out. Rounded, honeyed, nutty, um, it's got this intriguing uh, honey and honeysuckle character, floral, uh, it smells like it's going to be rich, um, it's 2010, 13% alcohol, and I don't notice anything that's too rich, and also with the oak, I don't notice any, anything that's too oaky. Feels like it's there as a framework uh, rather than something that's uh, going, go on, go on, you oaky, you go to the front. Smells, smells like it's going to be good and interesting. And that's what it is. I mean, Sauvignon in the southwest, uh, Bordeaux, I mean, Bordeaux is part of the southwest, but it's, uh, I think it's a kingdom in its own right. Uh, but Bordeaux Sauvignon is not like Loire Sauvignon. It tends to be rounder, richer. I think of this uh, tinned pear flavour. I don't get much of that tinned pear flavour here, but I do get this rounded, re uh, rich, slightly cooked pear, pear charlotte, you know, if you do one of those flans and uh, uh, there's the steam from the sponge. Uh, get that uh, uh, rich, round um, cake mix type character coming through. Um, not sure what I'd, whether, whether I'd, 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 I'd put it into the Sauvignon class when, when I'm thinking about what to eat with it, because uh, it, it, it is quite weighty. Uh, I'd almost think I'd like that with some cheese, um, weighty blue cheeses. I'd be very happy to have some of that with that. Yeah, nice wine. Good. Um, next white wine. Uh, we are, um, this is um, Pacheron du Vic Bill, um, and another mouthful of an appellation. I think Pacheron du Vic Bill and Madiron, uh, they cover the same, uh, same area. So the whites are Pacheron, uh, the reds are um, uh, and Madiron. And this is from a, a wine called Chateau Dédi, D apostrophe A Y D I E, and it's a 2010. Oh, day, day, day. It sounds like what you say to a good dog, isn't it? Oh, day, oh no, baby. Oh, day, day, day. Oh, day, day, day. So, uh, let's see whether this is baby wine or grown-up wine. Now, this is um, a degree and a half higher in alcohol, but it smells like it's going to be fresher. I don't know whether it's, um, I think, the same vintage. Uh, I, I, I don't know whether it's the lack of oak, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's to do with the grape varieties. Uh, they use the same grape varieties, pretty much, uh, as they do in Gironçon. So this is uh, Gros and Petit Monseigne, and they are uh, grapes that have the, uh, quite a lot of bite, uh, citrus bite, but then this herbiness in there as well. And, uh, uh, yeah, I get things like fennel, and uh, on the fruit, it's, it's more on the quinsedge than maybe the out-and-out -out, uh, uh, citrus character, he said, burping. Anyway, I better try, better try it. And the telltale of those wines uh, from Chironson is this lovely, fresh acidity. Uh, some people would hate acidity, but I, I mean, I, I think acidity in white wine, in, in red wine as well, is essential. Here, it's just acting as this lovely backbone. It's got a minerally streak down it as well, and then it's got these voluptuous. No, not too voluptuous. It's got these rounded, um, yeah, fit flavours, as in sort of like toned flavours. Uh, so yes, you get this uh, this this rounder custard apple type of richness, uh, but then uh, you you get these more sprightly, the green gauge, the quince. Really tasty wine, and uh, I'd have been hard pushed to say 14.5% alcohol. It certainly fills my mouth, but it fills it with good flavours rather than uh, blobby flavours. And adds in notes of herbs and saltiness and minerality and... Oh, I do like that. 
Let's see whether the reds are as good as those two. Uh, first one is um, Chateau Montoriol, um, Elevé en Fou, uh, Mons, I can't read it from the front label, Mons Aureolus, uh, Rouge 2010, uh, from the appellation of Fronton, um, and uh, the, the main grape here is one called Negrette, uh, so it's 50% Negrette, uh, plus uh, 25 each of Cabernet Sauvignon and Syrah, and it's 2010 vintage, let's give it a whirl. Now, Negrette, I mean, the, 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 uh, we're in the region here from where, where Tanat and Malbec come from, and those are quite sturdy but floral grapes. Uh, Negrette is much in that same mould, mold, and I get these, the, yeah, these, these are violets, um, and, uh, but this rounded plush fruit. Um, maybe there's the, some of that Syrah spice that's talking there, a bit of the Cabernet black currant, but it's this sweet puddingy uh, Negrette that, and with this violet scent that seems to be pushing to its way to the front and saying, hello, I'm quite attractive, and it is. Tar. Um, this is rich, rounded, almost overripe fruit, but just on that right side of overripeness. Um, and uh, there's this juicy, rounded plushness, uh, but then reined in. There's a nice structure to it. Uh, there's a nice uh, herby bite. There's this floral character, as I said, the violets are flitting in and out of there. Um, and there's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's at once soft but rustic. Uh, there is a slightly wild, untamed edge here, uh, but there's this soft, generous fruit as well. Um, sort of thing that will appear to appeal to both whether you're coming it from uh, a traditional European wine background or a New World. If you're from New World Edge, you'll like the ripeness. If you're from the um, Old World Edge, you'll like the, uh, that little herby uh, tannic bite. But um, nice wine. The whites still have the edge for me, though. Let's see whether we can rectify that with the final red wine. Uh, Monastère de Saint-Mont, from the uh, appellation of Saint-Mont, uh, and this is from the uh, one of the best cooperatives in France, the uh, Producteur Plémont. Uh, they are uh, pretty good, and they, they do Saint-Mont, and they do Côte de Gascoigne, and, um, yeah, if you look, at, look out for their wines, because they're, uh, they're usually up there, and they're great value. Uh, some more uh, grapes here. I think they, they can use a few of the Bordeaux grapes. So I think they can use Cabernet Sauvignon and uh, Cabernet Franc and Merlot. Uh, but they can also use Tanat and uh, there's another one called Fair. Uh, I think they, it's, uh, Fair I means French for iron. So uh, you can tell what sort of a grippy grape it is. Now, interesting this, that I stick my nose in here, and um, as I've, I've been swirling it for quite a while, 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 you've been, uh, while I've been gone, um, and first thing I smelled, I smelled uh, almost like a slightly fusty um, old barrel character, and I thought, is this slightly corked? Uh, and then I swirled it a bit more, and then the fruit started to come out. out. Um, and um, it feels like it's going to be quite a tough beast, and I don't know how much fair and how much tan that they've got in here, but it seems to be those more the local rustic grapes that are talking here rather than the uh, slightly more uh, refined uh, Bordeaux varieties. Uh, but there's this, again, this wildness to it, this slightly untamed character. Wouldn't be surprised if it packed quite a bit of tan in, uh, but anyway, let's have a see. Yeah, it's got this chocolatey, iron-like richness. Um, the chocolatey berry on the friendly side, the iron rusticity on the other side, and the two are, I, I mean, I think that I mean, the, the, the cork's been out of this bottle about 10 minutes, um, and I think that in an hour's time, uh, and probably in three hours' time, uh, the two will be sitting even uh, more uh, sympathetically together. At the moment, it feels like a bit of a tough bruiser of a wine, and... Um, it's tough. I mean, I don't want to put my head on the block and say what I think of it. Uh, absolutely, now uh, I think. I, I mean, I find that um, uh, there are some uh, some some of these these reds from this part of the world uh, where you can see elements of greatness and uh, and then this structure. And it really is a. Uh, it's uh, often it's a, it's a good winemaker it takes to uh, uh, to get the two in balance because you don't want to use lose the wildness. Uh, but uh, you don't want to uh, have the uh, sympathetic end um, squashed. I've got a feeling it's going to come through, but I've got a feeling also that it's going to take time for it to come through. So I'm going to go away, I'm going to give it a couple of hours at least before I try it again, and I will report back. Uh, but it has been a really interesting set of four wines, and uh, uh, my only problem now is that there are going to be two of us sitting down for dinner tonight, and uh, there are four bottles, each of which I would like to drink quite a bit of. What shall I do? It's a nice problem to have. Hey, see you soon.